The temperatures are warming up and that means it's time to get barbecuing. But before we go out and barbecue, we wanna figure out how to do it correctly. And here to help us is our good friend, James Winstead from the California Beef Council. So we're gonna talk about barbecuing beef specifically today and how to do it right. What's the first step? We've got two different cuts to look at. Um, right here, this is a, um a ribeye and this is a uh, lean top sirloin steak and as you can see there's some differences um, with the marbling so this is um, you know this is going to be your room for air almost so uh, the less fat that you have the less chance that you have if, if you overcook your steak so so if you're grilling or not paying attention then this is going to be your room for air um, and this is about an inch cut so it's going to probably take about 13 minutes um, to prepare so maybe about seven and a half minutes on each side now if you look over here this is the the top sirloin and it doesn't have as much marbling mm -hmm. so that's actually a, uh, a leaner cut of steak so now we're out at the grill we're ready to start grilling up our meat and what do we need to do next well first what we wanted to do was to add some salt and pepper to our steaks and so it, we're going to keep it really easy to today because uh, well we're we're on a time crunch here and so we don't have a lot of time to be able to prepare I'm our food. Very busy James. But if you have more than 15 minutes then you can go ahead and add a marinade. Oh yeah okay. yeah and with the leaner cut of uh, steak like the top sirloin um, that is going to be a preferred cooking method for a lean cut because it'll tenderize the steak a bit more. Got and it. So, um, but with something like the ribeye, obviously it's got more marbling, yeah. so you add salt and pepper, and then you're essentially just ready to go. And here's a dumb question. Does it matter where it goes on the grill, like direct heat? Or? Um, yeah, you can go direct heat uh, with the steak, so that way you can get a nice crust or skin on it, and then um, and then you can do a little crosh hash, hash technique too, depending on fancy. how fancy you want to get with it. Fancy. But yes, direct heat, that's... Uh, that's probably preferred for a steak. Okay. All right, it's time to flip. All right. Oh, look at those my hash marks. Those there are goes. Nice. Yeah, that, that'll be the uh, the, sog, the dog side treat there. <laughs> okay, so we already pulled off the other piece of meat. That was the top sirloin. Uh, like I said, that was a leaner cut, so it didn't have as much fat. So we had to get that cut of beef. Uh, removed from the grill earlier, but right now we're going to go ahead and flip the ribeye, which um, is obviously taking more time. So here we go. Go ahead and get a flip it there. So we think we're done with our meat, but we're not quite sure. So we're going to check with a meat thermometer. That's correct. That is the most accurate way to be able to tell if your meat is done or not. Got it. And so there's a technique to it, actually. You could, I mean, most people, they typically uh, insert the thermometer right into the middle on the grill, but that can give you an accurate, an inaccurate uh, reading. So huh. what we're going to do is we're going to pick up our steak, insert the thermometer through the side like this, and go for the middle. And we'll see the temperature rise. Now, once it hits 145 degrees Fahrenheit, that is a medium rare um, steak. Okay, we've got uh, a separate plate here, a non-contaminated plate, so we had two plates. Yes, this was the raw meat plate, and this is the finished meat plate, correct? That's correct. All so right. that way we avoid cross-contamination. We don't ah. introduce any of that raw juices onto our nice, freshly cooked steak. Oh, no, don't want this, oh, no. I'm getting hungry looking at this meat, I gotta tell you. So we took it off the grill and we let it sit for about five minutes, five, 10 minutes. Right. So the juices would stay in there because if we cut into it right after the juices would just start flowing out of the meat, right? Exactly, so we would allow five minutes for that standing time. So uh, one thing that it does is it allows the steak to finish cooking, so it'll rise another five degrees. Um, second thing it'll do is that it'll allow the uh, steak to be more tender. So um, let the juices settle in and give you more of a, a, a tender steak. So okay. that's why we usually try to allow that standing it's time. It's so hard though to wait, wait I those know, five minutes. I know, you can't. You're just salivating the whole I time. Know. Okay, now we, we washed our utensils in between um, when the steak was cooking, so that way we avoid cross-contamination. So that's uh, another thing, another reminder that um, I'd like to share with everybody is make sure you wash your utensils so you don't cross-contaminate and get some of those raw juices onto your uh, finished beef. So something you're gonna wanna do is cut uh, against the grain, so that also allows you to have a, a more tender steak as well. Okay, okay, that's a good tip. And this uh, ribeye right here, this should be about medium rare. And as you can see, that looking is, into it, yeah. yep, it's got that nice crust and then some of that redness in the middle there. And that's how you know you get a nice medium rare. Oh, look at that, wow. Oh, yeah, yeah you can right. see right look there, it's getting so closer good. to that, well done. That's so smart. 
and a well done steak is around the temperature of about 170 degrees. Okay. Top sirloin. Look at that. And there we go. Awesome. That looks great. Thank you so much. What are you going to eat? Um, I'm going to have that. <laughs> That's all for me. What are you talking about? <laughs> what? <laughs> awesome. I'll have the other half. Well, for all of James's tips, you can find them at our website, CaliforniaBountiful.com. And I want to use a fork and start eating, I guess. All right, let's okay. dig in.